Live radio, local podcasts, the Frederick Podcast Network at listenfrederick.com. Hello and welcome to the Fedora Files. I am Gregory Fedora, and as you can see, I have a great guest with me. It is Kristen from Paranorm Girl, as well as her other podcasts. She's got multiple things going on. You're, you're like, you're like a phenom, and honestly, you are like the a go-to podcast. I, I love. I li- I think I listen to you every week that you have one. And I even try and catch your other show with the other guys. I've been on it. Like I sent messages mm-hmm. on that. And like, I felt sad because there's one week I really wanted to be there. And just, I think it was on my birthday weekend and I was out of town. So I couldn't, but I was like really excited about, I listened to it after, but I was like, dang it. I wanted to contribute. I but, know. I know. I really wanted to see you on there. You, you missed, yeah. I mean, birthday really, really. Yeah. Great. Is that, mm-hmm. it's not that important. It's not. I, I know oh. it happens every year. After like 40, it's like, eh, yeah, it's all downhill. Yeah. You probably (laughs) don't want to count them, (laughs) but so what, what wouldn't tell, tell everybody, I I, cause I want to get out of the way, Ryan, we'll come back to it, but all the places they can find you and watch you. Absolutely. Cause I want them to get right out of the way. Yes. Yes. Um, and they can go and immediately start listening and just leave this episode. Yeah. Cause it's probably better. Please don't do that. No, no, <laughs> your show. <laughs> Absolutely no. not. I, I'm a fumbling mess. Uh, no, you can find Paranorm Girl uh, anywhere that you get your podcasts. And I also post uh, video versions mm-hmm. of the shows on YouTube. And uh, Beer, Booze, and Boogeymen, I believe, since we finally, it's three shows that have culminated Mm -hmm. to make this concoction that is Beer, Booze, and Boogeymen. It's myself, The Black Cat Report, and Life Beyond Six Feet. We create B3. Um, So after we finalize that, like, coming togetherness of the show, I do believe we are available now on all podcast platforms there as well Nice. (laughs) for a second there we were only available on youtube and spotify so we just kind of had to figure out those final the final tunings of the workings of a podcast and getting that up for people to enjoy yeah yeah and and i'm gonna just tell everyone like go check her stuff out it's it's amazing i love it like all of them oh Uh, thank you beers boo ah beers wait i'm gonna say a tongue twister twister. yeah (laughs) beer booze and boogeyman yeah is yeah. uh it's it's fun and it's funny like it, it's so entertaining <laughs> like because you guys are hilarious when you guys are talking about stuff and yeah well we, yeah. we we try to keep it entertaining um you know it was supposed to be like a you know a comedic take on mm-hmm. just paranormal and just weird subjects like yeah. we've got three totally different sources here coming in we we all have our own kind of beliefs about things and and you know when we get together we're just uh we're, we're funny as fuck man oh yeah. can i can i curse yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's fine yeah, we're it's fine. funny as fuck man like yeah. it's it's like that friend group and the group chat and that whole like kind of energy going on um yeah yeah but it's 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 a lot of fun it's very very different than paranormal yeah. girls and, just, you know, yeah and, and, it, and you have art or audience participation which is yes, the, the other best. that's yeah which is really cool that that you are you have that because you don't see that a lot in podcasts you don't you really don't. like like i don't know many that allow the listeners to interact in that way on that like right i'm, af- right. I'm afraid to do that on mine because i don't know who's listening other than my mom like and i don't want her to interact with me on here you know that that was a, a fear I, I don't know I shouldn't say a fear but it, it was it was a thought in my mind when I when we were heading into like that premiere episode like I don't know about this like you know you're gonna get some real <clears throat> real goofy people and maybe some people that I, I don't know are on the edge or something and mm-hmm. do we want them calling into the show like uh, I I was just unsure because I have that like uncertainty in regards yeah. to the interaction because I do a pre-recorded show and this is completely live. You can't censor it. Whoever mm-hmm. comes on, comes on. They can say whatever they want. Yeah. And uh, one of the co-hosts, you know, they, he and I are both uh, just rabid Art Bell fans. Mm-hmm. And that was like one of the greatest aspects of that show was that live call in feature and just all the characters, all those kinds yeah. of characters that would call in and you would get used to hearing the same folks call in yeah. and you look forward to it and just the way that art was able to 
handle them just in yeah. the moment and uh, it's just so enjoyable um and so he put it to me in that way that like you know what, what would what would art do like we want those mm -hmm. kinds of folks to call in we want that memorable you know experience but the the main idea behind that interaction of course is to kind of create this paranormal community aspect and kind of just like share that beyond the confines of people that are actually in the field or people that do the podcast like the the crowd is so much bigger than that and so all of our guests are i mean always welcome to call in we encourage it and we just want to have this conversation with them and get other people's mm -hmm. takes on it yeah and it's it's an ending that one day that i called in and you're like oh no just hang up on him no. so <laughs> <laughs> no never <laughs> no so but i was curious that like like I've been on your show, so I've wanted to have you on and then finally got up the courage to get you on. And uh, I was curious, what got you into the whole paranormal and cryptid and ufology? Like, what was the thing? Because I, I mean, I know what how I got into it, but I was, I've always curious, like, how did you get drawn into this dark corner? Into the paranormal, um, that... That started a long time ago. I mean, I grew up in an environment that my my mother was very uh, open to the idea of uh, the paranormal, to ghosts, to the afterlife, and that's that. It wasn't unusual for us to have conversations about it. Like I know in some families, it it is a little, it's awkward, or it's just not talked about, or it's downplayed. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that wasn't the case in my family. So I just, I, I just kind of grew up in that environment. So that planted that seed early on mm -hmm. and I would go off from there. Just, it, it just always being an interest of mine. Um, you know, I would go through phases of being quite a bit more skeptical though, and, and really starting to question, you know, cause mm -hmm. when you're a kid, you believe a lot of things and then you get to yeah. an age and you start to question like well why do i believe that <laughs> yeah I've, ne I've never seen a ghost are they real yeah. um so yeah of course you know you ebb and flow with that throughout your life but um yeah and then uh, ultimately like by the time i started the show that that interest of course was still there that fascination with it was still there but i just kind of it, it was a meeting of, of like just like a perfect meeting of worlds where it was a perfect time to do it i was in a questioning place of like what does it all mean and mm -hmm. also still like butting up against that fascination with it i was like fuck it i'm gonna i'm gonna explore it and you know mm -hmm. maybe other folks would like to explore it along with me so that that's kind of why you started doing a show is you were questioning mm -hmm. it and then you just wanted to talk about it and get it out yeah. there that's, oh yeah yeah, yeah. well because at that point like uh, the reason i was questioning it was because i i didn't think at that point that I had ever had the kinds of experiences that all these other people are talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and they sound amazing, but it's like, no, I don't, I, you know, I don't think I've ever had a paranormal experience. That's so yeah. weird. So like, I, I'd, I'd like to see like, if my belief in it is, is valid um, or if it is like, you know, more acceptable to be totally skeptical about this, maybe nothing is real. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't believe in any of this, but there's only, only one way to find out. I got to like explore it at a very nuts and bolts level break it apart for myself throw it all back together and see what i've got at the end yeah so have you had an experience now or are you still waiting yeah no <laughs> <laughs> i i have had plenty of experiences right. that was uh that was a real eye-opening moment there and it was kind of early on in the show where i was able to have that realization that i had actually had paranormal experiences i had just been I guess maybe dramatizing it in my mind, pushing down, pushing back, uh, downplaying the things that had happened to me, like mm -hmm. brush, brushing <clears throat> them off as coincidences or no, that was yeah. a weird dream or, or no, maybe that's just my memory kind of messing with me. But it's like, no, actually this, this is sounding very similar to the stories that I'm, I'm coming across now. Like this did happen to me. So like I have actually had paranormal experiences and then from the point of the start of the show forward, just because, and this happens with anything that you're hyper-focused on, just because I was paying so much, like, full attention to the subjects that I was covering, mm -hmm. once you open your eyes 
to this stuff, it's it's kind of hard to close your eyes again yeah. once you understand a truth about something. And because I was paying attention, it was a lot easier to see that this stuff was not only happening, but it, it happens pretty frequently. And if mm -hmm. you're not paying attention, you're going to miss it. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. for everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it. like for me, it's like uh, I, I knew my grandmother had like flat, full on experience, like seeing an apparition mm -hmm. of her cu cousin and telling her something very specific that was important to her mm -hmm. and and it, it was like literally telling her where to find something and and she went exactly where the ghost had told her and she found exactly what she needed oh. and then but i remember like she had told me that story but i was like oh that's kind of cool you know and for me my i guess first experience that i like it was really like because i kind of stayed away from ghost stuff because it kind of wigged me out but i went <laughs> i went i went to gettysburg with my buddy chip and he he had gotten us a ghost tour, but he did, what he didn't tell me was I was just saying it's going to be a ghost tour. They walk around, tell me stories. I'm like, okay, yeah. And then Bobby saw this headless man or something, you know. And then it, it was no, it was full on. We're going to try and find ghosts, and and the oh. dude gave us dowsing rods. <laughs> dowsing <laughs> rods, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. To to communicate, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so yeah, and I was like, ah, whatever, and so. He, we were walking around and he gave me these rods and I'm, I'm just being me being stupid. And I was like, I go, Hey, is anyone here from Ohio tonight? And then like the thing went like, like that. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like pulling them apart. And I'm like, Oh yeah. I get, Oh, how about Dayton? Any Dayton? Dayton? Cause that's where I grew up and it did it again. And I'm like, what the flip? And I was like, and, and then the guy who was going to tour said, did you see what's behind you? And I'm like, I uh, know. And he goes, turn around. And I looked and it was a monument to the regiment from Ohio where at this point the Ohio regiment was there and they had lost oh. like 2000 people or something. Wow. Died at that point. And they were all from Ohio and from the Cincinnati Dayton area. And I was like, Oh gosh. <laughs> oh goes, my God. So, so that was like one where I was like, Holy crap. That was, and my buddy was recording at night and he's like, I was like, okay, well, I'm kind of done tonight. Here you go. <laughs> I'm going to stop before I tick these people off. But, uh, oh, and that didn't, but, that didn't launch your, uh, your no, passion I, I, for ghosts at that point. It still wigs you out. It still wigs me out, but I'm like, <laughs> I, I love hearing about it. Like yeah. I, and my, my buddy Chip, he goes to all the ghost things and he like does these things constantly. And I love having him on talk about it, but in, I'm just like one of these. I'm like, I'm still at that kind. Cause me, it's like not being able to see something like I don't want to anger it. I'm not like a, that, that show where they want to fight everything. Like oh, in yeah. my mind, yeah. my, my mind is I don't want someone punch me that I can't see. Cause I don't know where they're coming from and I don't want to get scratched. I, yeah. you know. I know they can just abuse you with impunity. impunity. Cause yeah. what are you going to do? What you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. But I do. But I do agree. I think if you do open your eyes you do see supernatural things mm -hmm. happening and like uh and you can really appreciate it and i and it's really interesting to do mm -hmm. that i just don't openly go and tick off supernatural beings i think that's a bad idea i like, do I, too yeah, yeah i i would agree with you i'm, I'm not down with the provoking life yeah. definitely not but now i know i you did a big series on bigfoot and you still do yeah. you go back like what got i'm curious in the cryptid aspect what obviously bigfoot had a big like thing with you what was it what has drawn you to the the monsters that are out there oh boy um well i don't know if this is a great answer but i'll tell you i'll tell you All i right. trust you <laughs> so bigfoot was never my thing mm -hmm. i i was a ghosty girl i was mm -hmm. a near death experience girl Okay. Uh, shadow figures. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, I did not grow up hearing stories about Bigfoot, about cryptids. Mm -hmm. um, th this, these were not the conversation that we had. So when I reached that season on Bigfoot, it was like a whole new frontier for me. Mm -hmm. Like it was starting at scratch. All of the stories that I know you know, like you're very familiar mm -hmm. with, people are very familiar with uh you know the the cabin where they're throwing the rocks at and uh, yeah. all of these big <clears throat> stories same with ufos i did not know those stories and it's it's embarrassing to admit that but like it's also not because like you have to start somewhere mm -hmm. 
and it's never too late to learn about something. Yeah. So that was where I started with that in being able to go through that season at the level that I, I attack these subjects and you're learning it just inside and out, every aspect of it you possibly can soak up. Learning it at that level, like opened my eyes very, very early on in the season that, holy shit, there's really something happening here. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's undeniable. The fact that so many researchers, so many scientists are on board with this stuff. And look, this is what they're saying about the footprints and the dermal ridges and the, and the scat yeah. samples and all, all of this physical evidence that people are coming across out there and how unlikely it is that it, it can't all be pranksters like yeah where these footprints are found like all of the stuff uh, that supports this idea this concept that there is a, a a big hairy monster for lack of a better word out there in the woods it's yeah. it just is so it just got me very very excited because this is an unknown it's a huge unknown there's so many people still skeptical about this subject but to come to a place of not having known anything about it to start, getting very jazzed, very passionate about it because there is something here. And then just by the end of the season, it's just like, I'm a Bigfoot girl now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm down, man. I I, I want to, I, I eat everything I can up about it now. Same with UFOs, same with all the subjects that I've covered that I yeah. wasn't like totally skeptical about, but like that, yeah, Bigfoots are that's my jam now. I've got yeah. so much Bigfoot paraphernalia in the studio now because yes. I collect it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. which of the Bigfoot stories was your favorite like that you found? Um, I liked, well, I, okay. All right. I I'll tell you the, the favorite story that I found because it's just so, it's so cinematic and I just, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's not a really well-known one. It was played on a television show years ago, but it was this uh, cop, this, uh, LEO. He was off duty. He went out in the woods for a hike because he had gotten off work early and he's like walking around and, and he, he's, he's like, a, uh, I don't know how, like if he's like a mapper, like he's really into mapping or why he had this, but he had one of them. It's like a camera what it's called but it's a thing you look through and you can like aim it to okay. see like what direction you're you're going and he went to put it up to his eye and he's looking through the little like like circle there the little glass and there's a face look back at him a little hairy face <laughs> a little ape face and he's like you know prickles go up on the back of his neck and he like you know lowers it and he's acting all nonchalant about it and he puts it back and he goes to reach for his gun because like he's immediately like on edge like yeah frightened because this is obviously not a human but it's got like this human face staring right at him and by the time he goes to pull his gun it's, it's gone it's gone in oh, a matter wow. of like a second so he starts hauling ass out of there mm -hmm. he's gonna get away from this thing and like the way he tells the story of how he's just like ripping through these trees and going down the hillsides and he runs into other wildlife and the whole time this thing he knows it's right behind him he can feel it yeah. right there he can hear it like breaking trees as it's running oh, wow. and he gets like down to like the parking area and he's within like 20 feet of his car Oh, and he's just hauling ass, hauling ass, and he can feel it right behind him. Oh, I'm getting like shivers thinking about this. And he finally makes it. And he's just like, please don't let me die. Don't let me die out here. Mm -hmm. And he gets to his car and he gets in, thankfully. And he yeah. you know, peels out of there. Um, and the thing was just was just gone when he looked back. So that was like probably one of my most favorite stories that I found. It's not, you know, yeah, it's that's... not a well-known one, but I, I love it. Um. But, you know, I, I always gravitated towards any stories having to do with um, like army or military personnel, LEOs, uh, mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, I gravitated towards those because that gives those experiences, those encounters, just like this level of, you know, I don't know, gravity to them, yeah. like validity mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. Like, these are people highly trained to observe and to tell the truth. Not all of them are like that. Not all of them yeah. are truthful people, but just that there's so many. Yeah. And uh, and also in that line of work, bit admitting to something like that, mm. like they obviously had an experience Yeah. because you're like, kind of like, why would you? By yeah. you know that you can like, you're gonna you're gonna get mocked. Do you want to <laughs> so, be on death duty? Is that what yeah. you want? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like one of my favorites is the uh, 
up in Alaska, the the one where the whole town just in Antonoc, poor yeah, Chatham. where they mm-hmm. where they just left, yes. and it, and it was all because of a Bigfoot, and it's like, and there's no other explanation. That's yeah, no, there was this killer mm-hmm. Bigfoot. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, the le- the legends <laughs> of the Nantanai, and it goes back yeah. like yeah, centuries. Yeah. Like yeah. Native Americans talked about it. That's a creepy story. That was the first mm-hmm. time I read a Bigfoot story where I actually got scared yeah. because it's oh, not yeah. just a Bigfoot. It was a yeah, violent a, Bigfoot. Yeah, he was ticked. He's like, you're on my <laughs> land, and he, yeah, and the native natives knew well enough not to go there or stay there, mm-hmm. but the, then the. Americans were like, we're going, we're going fishing town. We don't care. We can't you know, <laughs> say, oh, not for long. <laughs> yep, so, yeah, they really yeah. weren't not there for yeah. long. But like, and that that one for me was kind of like really cool. And another one that's similar is uh the I think it's the uh the muddy monster, Murphysville mud monster. I don't know if you've heard oh, that story. Yeah, what did yeah, I like? It's it's basically what I found it's, about it. it, it's basically a Bigfoot, like the mm-hmm. way it's described, except it's covered in mud. But for me, one of the best parts of it is the first two people who saw it were a couple who were like having a liaison near this area. And this Bigfoot came or this thing came and they went and they reported to the cops. And the thing was, is both of these people were married to other people. They were having an affair, but whatever they saw scared them so much. They told Mm -hmm. the police everything which led to both of them getting divorced but so but like, that it was worth it enough enough like they, they obviously something saw they something, saw something yeah. that they were willing to admit to their affair yeah. <laughs> because of what they <laughs> saw so i was always like well that that's something happened there mm-hmm. like and mm-hmm. th- that's all I ha- now curious have you thought of doing a show on loch ness I because have. there because there's a lot of new evidence coming out like within this year there's a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff mm-hmm. that has come out new crazy stuff that i'm like yeah. like i've always avoided loch ness i mean i love the story that was kind of what got me into monsters was loch ness and bigfoot okay. and then like when i was younger but then as i got older i was like ah loch ness there's no way it's like by this like there's so many people going there with radar and you know mm-hmm. there's not and then all of a sudden in the past five years they're like dude we're finding crazy stuff i'm like oh mm-hmm. okay so yeah it's like yeah coming back around i've i've so. heard i've been hearing the rumblings uh for the yeah. last couple of years hearing the rumblings that yeah they're they're finding stuff um yeah. i think i think if i do like i have thought about it in the context of oh my goodness sorry i turned my phone yeah. off but the clock doesn't care yeah. no. um <laughs> but like in the context of cryptids in general but what I think is probably going to happen because Loch Ness is such a huge topic, it's it's probably yeah. going to end up getting its own season, which would be great. Yeah. I'd love to just tear that creature apart and yeah. and take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd love cool. to hear you because I thought you your Bigfoot se- season was awesome. I thought you did a great job Thank with that. You. So I'd I'd be interested to see you do Loch Ness. Yeah. 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 Like, now, yeah, I'm curious. Other than Bigfoot and Loch Ness. Is there a monster or cryptid that really interests you that you haven't really gone into you on your show? Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to say, um, uh, it's not, it's not PC to say, is it not PC to say, or people just don't like you saying it, but the, the S Walker and the W it go <laughs> oh yeah you know oh yes 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 um those... you're not supposed to say it because if you're you did I, I would see it in your window behind you i make the mistake <laughs> i i say it all the time and i mess with, yeah you're not you supposed know what? Personally, to i i don't i uh, i i don't think anything but i don't want to offend anybody um yeah or scare anybody yeah but you know the those creatures are incredibly scary and yeah. uh specifically for Halloween one time I covered I I, I did a, a quick bit about the S Walker but the version that they see in Appalachia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because there's some crazy stuff happening in that mountain range. Like oh, there's I I live near that mountain range. Oh. <laughs> okay. Do you abide by the rules? Uh, it's kind of yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well I I literally live like I can kind of walk to the Appalachian trail Mm -hmm. from my home and 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 I like in Maryland which is where I am Mm -hmm. uh there's a place called South Mountain 
and I can literally see South Mountain from my backyard. And that's kind of like the epicenter of all the ghosts and cryptids of Maryland is. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I didn't know that when I moved here and we bought this house. And it was really funny because I started doing research on stuff. And all of a sudden I'm like reading like, and this monster, uh, the Snallygaster, the Dwayo, the Snarly Yow, uh, mm-hmm. the Wizard of South Mountain, Madeline Dahlgren. And then she had a whole book of mag- South Mountain magic. And I'm like, is she talking about that? <laughs> I go, we're like right by it. So, and then when I, I I go up there all the time, and there's actually plaques up there which people don't even realize that tell about the different things that are oh. associated. The only thing I haven't found is I have not found uh, the Wizard of South Mountain's grave, which I know is mm-hmm. just on the other side of the mountain. I just haven't found it yet, mm-hmm. or I haven't gone to see it yet. I want to, and the copy of his book which is his wizard's book. And it's in a museum on the other side of the mountain, but it's a small museum and there's, it's only open certain times I've yet to go, but I want to go to see that. But, but oh, yeah, that is so cool, I don't know though. if you've heard about I've, Michael Zittle. But uh-uh. If you get it, if well, you well, answer, just not aside from what you've, you've said, yeah. you, you mentioned him before, but I don't know. Yeah. 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 You should look him up. He's really, it's a tragic yet interesting story okay. because he, Seemed to be like, depending on who you talk to, like this one, Mavlin Dahlgren hated him. Uh, she was very religious and was, he's just evil black magic. But then if you read other accounts of him, he seemed to be a nice guy that was trying to help people. But he had one rule, which was you don't get paid for magic. That was his hmm. thing. You don't get paid. So he kind of was a poor dude, but he would heal, do healings and he'd do hexes and stuff. And, um, and he wouldn't take money for it, but people would give him food and stuff, but he's like, you don't get paid. But he, at one point he got to a point where he was just needed funds. Mm -hmm. So he took his magic book and reprinted it in English and sold it. And within, I think is within two years of doing that, he died destitute. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's really, it's your, it's kind of, which was his thing. He said that if you do this, bad things happen. And he, I guess he had just gotten to this point. He just had to, yeah. He needed the money and he's like, okay, I'll do it. And then it, his life went. Oh, that's so, that's so unfair though. Like it was just a book. Yeah. Yeah, Like he wrote the book. He sold the book. You know, that's not magic. It is a book of magic, but oh. Yeah. Yeah, But but I won't tell you the whole thing because you should research like the, even the story on his book. It's very interesting because he's only had like a sixth, seventh, eighth grade education and this book the translation and all that it's kind of insane how like the language it was in and then all that and yet the story behind the book is crazy too that he told so ziddle yeah, ziddle yeah, i'm gonna yeah, look yeah, this rhymes up rhymes with after. little z yeah so it's basically little but with a z instead of an l oh, but it's easy. mike uh-huh. michael ziddle michael and, ziddle and, and and his family still lives on south mountain they have a, there's an area called ziddle town Whoa. and like and it's yeah and they're his mm. descendants and and relatives but i wonder if they mm. kept up with the with his you know i i don't think they practice. do they don't really i i think he's kind of a pariah they don't mm. really yeah you, know, you can't like i've gone over there and like try to talk to their yeah like oh that he crazy <laughs> that's our crazy ancestor from the 1800s nobody wants to talk about that Oh, so yeah wow. i would i would totally celebrate that if i oh, had totally yeah like, yeah now i am curious about another because i know you're ghosts mm-hmm. what is your favorite ghost story that you have heard of all that you really think is amazing you told me your bigfoot one and you probably have shared it on your show but i'm i want you to steal it and throw it online <laughs> Um, hmm. well, I can't think of anything I heard ever heard before I started this research. Um, so it, it may not be fair because I don't have a ton to pick from right now, but mm-hmm. I recently read, um, a really cool one because I was looking into cases of, um, ghosts like hauntings and the ghosts 
that were perpetrating the hauntings who like saved people or like helped mm -hmm. people like it's a benevolent haunting yeah and i came across this one on ghost to ghost.com <laughs> i've never mm -hmm. heard of the website before but there's some pretty cool there's some pretty cool submissions and uh this fellow was talking about he was at a real low point in his life um and uh, I'm telling this on my next episode, so you'll get the scoop here. Nice. But uh, he's at this real low point in his life. Uh, he he just separated from his wife and he uh, found himself just alone in this like little one bedroom apartment and, you know, just kind of going about his his life like that. And he had just moved in. It was like a week into right after he'd moved. And he suddenly found himself like being jolted awake just suddenly mm -hmm. with this voice and it like the voice was like telling him like like making suggestions or reminding him of things that he he had to get done immediately like things that were help it helpful to him mm -hmm. and like at one point like he was falling asleep and he heard the ovens on and you know his eyes shot open and he walked into the kitchen and sure enough the oven was on he had forgot to turn it off so like things like that and so that went on for, for a little bit. And like this whole time, he's like telling himself that ah, this has got to be like, you know, cause I'm sleeping and, you know, kind of drowsy. It's got to be my, me. Like either mm -hmm. I'm saying it like sleep talking, or mm -hmm. it's like just going on in my subconscious and I'm, I'm creating a voice out of it. So, you know, up to a certain point, he thought it was himself. And then one night he was getting ready for bed and he was mm -hmm. just like sitting there fully awake and he heard the voice and the voice said, sleep with your pistol. And he said like the voice, it was, it was a voice, like literally just somebody like two feet away from him. That's how close this was yeah. originating from. And he was just like, so shocked. And he's like, what? <laughs> and it was like, you know, sleep with your pistol. Um, and so just because like all of these occurrences, they'd been so consistent, they'd, they'd already been so, specific and so helpful up to that point he decided to you know yeah tr trust yeah. the voice i guess so he grabbed his pistol and he put it under his pillow and he went to sleep and like middle of the night he jolts awake the voice jolts him awake and, and it just says he's here and the guy looks looks down across his room and there is a man standing in his doorway and he like he just acted really quick like he already had the gun he had the jump on this guy puts the gun on him was like get the fuck down the guy gets down and he's like pleading please 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 i won't hurt you just let me go blah 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 and the and and the fella is just like you know whatever has has him at gunpoint he's calling 911 the cops come they take him away this guy come to uh, come to find out this guy had was had like a knife on him i mean who knows mm -hmm. what he was planning was, to do yeah. to this dude but he had a knife on him he had a record and he ended up going to jail for uh quite a good amount of time i can't remember what his sentence was um and then like after this all went down the guy just like said to the voice like i don't know who you are but thank you um mm -hmm. and then the voice like signed off i guess it was just like you know I, i'm i'm here it's okay i'm here or whatever and then he never heard from it again and he ended up moving out like down the road and like the haunting ceased like it didn't follow him or anything it was just in mm -hmm. that apartment for this like yeah. length of time but like this voice you know if this story is it true if this true. claim is true yeah. it's a pretty fantastic story to me because one like he, he never found out who this could have been you know mm -hmm. this ghost this haunting um it it just did it to save this guy and help this guy out of just the kindness of its heart to just be benevolent to be a good person yeah. um and uh yeah i don't know i just I, I found that story especially intriguing yeah that is it like i i've always wondered what i would be like as a ghost and i don't think i'd be that <laughs> nice i'd be the one, I, I would turn the oven on and then be like Hey, your oven's on. Okay. And then he'd go turn it off. Then I'd come back, turn it back on. It's still on. <laughs> water's boiling. Ghost. Yeah, water's boiling. Yeah. Don't <laughs> go make me coffee. Yeah. You know? Don't haunt me, Gregor. Nah. Please don't. <laughs> I'd be the worst ghost ever. I already so. got chaos just in my regular life. Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. So, but. <clears throat> 
<laughs> but, but that's a crazy story. That's that's a, yeah. see, that's a good. That's it. Like, well, that's like in the movie Ghost, the good ghost, you know, Patrick yeah. Swayze ghost. That's the kind yeah. of ghost you want. The good looking yeah. ghost that wants to make pottery. And <laughs> no, that's where. You know, that's all what that's all we all really just want like just yeah. at the end of the day we just, all want that yeah the good looking ghost that just wants I, to be there i'll i'll take a helpful i mean good looking or not i will take a helpful ghost who can help me with like editing and yeah you know i'd like outlining. a ghost that yeah that did my dishes like wouldn't that be nice like, i can't oh. even get my kids to do my dishes it's like <laughs> it's like man if i had a ghost do it that'd be fantastic but I even live next to a graveyard and none of them come over and help. And yeah. It's... yeah. Do you think, uh, but, do, you, do you think graveyards yeah. are haunted or do you no. think that's the last place they would want to be? I think I don't like, I know people think, but I, I don't, cause I'm, I'm a, I, I believe that if there's a ghost, it's going to go where there's meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think that if they are dead, the cemetery has no meaning to them because mm -hmm. they never probably were there when they're alive yeah. and they're going to go either where their, their family is or where their, their home is or something they are used to, you know, if they're, if they're going to, if they're going to stay, like, I mean, I, I do, I do have issue with, uh, I, I don't know. Cause I do believe in a God. So I have issue with people the ones that wig we, we me out are children ghosts. I have an issue with that because I mm -hmm. don't think they like. It's just me personally. I don't think they're kids because I yeah. I would because because I I believe in God. So I think if a child dies, God's not going to say you got to stay in that dirty old house. You know, I think I think He's kind that they would get to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's bad things pretending to be because whenever I hear the stories about children ghosts. It doesn't, they never seem good. Like, right, like, yeah. like, cause it's always like, and they, they like, can I go home with you? It's like, they're like kind of manipulative. And I'm like, I know kids can be manipulative cause I have them, but mm -hmm. like uh, the few times I, I, cause I've read stories where people have had go children ghosts and they're like, yeah, you can come home with me. And then they come to their house and it's like a poltergeist thing that goes on. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that wasn't a good thing. So if I, yeah yeah i, I guess I, I have come I across know. a couple of stories of children ghosts that don't I, they they do make me question in general because just because i want to i want to think that the universe is fair that, yeah yeah if, if if you know a child passes away like that they're not like trapped somewhere or stuck yeah. somewhere that would that's awful yeah. Um, but you know, there are, there are cases out there that would yeah. make you question that, that it doesn't turn into a poltergeist, you know, malignant mm -hmm. possession of your house type thing. And they're just, they're just kind of there because they yeah. like it there and they like you, but I don't know. I'll, I'll have to get into that, that side yeah. of it, but children <laughs> ghosts in general are, they, they do kind of creep me out, I guess, as far yeah. as ghosts go, that's, that's what would wig me out a little bit. Yeah. Would it, ha have you seen the movie, the others? with Nicole yes Kidman. oh yeah. yeah see now I love that movie and I don't want to ruin it for people but that there's parts of it that I'm like hmm I'm like that doesn't seem right or fair at all like when you get to the end of the story you're like that does that's not fair that's wrong mm. <laughs> you know but and I don't want to give it away if people haven't seen it but go see it it's a great story it's it's like, a good it's one. great yeah. it's a great ghost story it's like mm -hmm. really it's like to me, it felt very Edgar Allan Poe-ish, like yeah, kind well, of, like kind yeah, of, this this the, the cinematography the twist, in that thing yeah, is really dark. yeah, and just the actual yeah. story itself is just so yeah, dark, twisty. It yeah. sets <clears throat> it sets a mood. It, it yeah, certainly does. like and, and another one. I'm going to show. This is off topic, but I mentioned Edgar Allan Poe, so my head goes to it. Have you seen The Pale Blue Eyes? I think it's on Netflix. I have not. It, mm -hmm. If if you like Edgar Allan Poe. It's a great movie because it, it's I can briefly tell you it's a murder mystery and Christian Bale's in it and he plays a detective. But there's a young Edgar Allan Poe and it, and it, supposed, it supposedly takes time, place when he was at West Point and Edgar Allan Poe was at West Point for like a year. Mm -hmm. And so this murders these murders happen at that and he's helping the detective. But what's cool about it is as you're watching the movie 
all these little things happen that if you know Edgar Allan Poe's stories or writings, it's all little Easter eggs. And it's even up into the very end. And I don't want to give away the end, but even the very last scene, you're just like, oh my gosh, that's blah, blah, blah. And you like, and you're like, oh, like, and cause I like his writing. So it's like throughout mm-hmm. it, there's all these little twists and things that if you're watching, you're like, Hey, wait a minute. He wrote a story that, you know, like it looks like it's every story he wrote is in the movie at some point. Oh, that sounds and, so good. But, and it's really, and, and overall, and even if you don't know his stuff, it's such a good movie that you're just like, yeah, man, Christian Bale's uh, to me, he's an amazing actor and he does a great job. And, Oh so. God, he's he's so good in anything. That yeah, he does. and I can't. And the guy who plays Edgar Allan Poe is amazing too. I can't, I don't know who I, I know he's well known, but I I I, I didn't know. Him. He's like the kids know the kids the kids know who he is. <laughs> the kiddos. Yeah, yeah, the kids on my 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 daughters knew who he was. They're like, oh, that sounds so from this. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like he's in his twenties. Neat. Like, uh-huh. Yeah, it's not it's not like Timothy Shyamalan or something, but it's somebody else. But See, I know that guy, but you know, I'm not totally yeah. out of touch. I'm, I, I'm a little out of touch. I'll, I yeah. don't know any of the new, the newbies. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. It's all right. Officially sorry. old, you know. Yeah, happens it happens. To the best of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're only as old as you think you are. I'm, I think I'm it, old. <laughs> okay, but I think these, this, like this, ghosts and the cryptid keeps you young because it keeps you inquisitive, and then that's it keeps like your really, mind going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, this like doing this kind of research has stretched my brain in ways that I never thought possible before. Mm-hmm. Like I-, I thought I was like decently or like averagely smart before. Mm-hmm. But uh, looking into the some of the stuff because you go on these little side journeys whenever yeah. you're looking at a subject, there's all these little like little tributaries you can go off into that if you can understand those then you have an even greater understanding of like the main subject so how many times have i dove down like quantum physics rabbit holes like Mm -hmm. i don't understand quantum physics but i (laughs) i've certainly read a lot about it now just like that was never something i i thought that i would ever be into and it's and yeah. the thing is it's exciting too when you do yeah. understand anything about it oh oh it's the best yeah and, and, and what's great well it's basically like bigfoot like you get into it used to be just yeah this ape man type thing in the woods but now the theories where like possibly he's from a different dimension which explains yeah. how he disappears so quickly in his this that and then like i i was doing some research where like the reason why most of the photos are blurry is because he is from another dimension, a different frequency. Ooh. So, and if you've ever seen, I'm, I'm going to show my geekness. If you've seen the movie, like uh, into the spider verse, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, but, oh I haven't. Uh, oh, another great movie. If you like Spider-Man superheroes, it's a great, it's a cartoon, but it gets into multiverse and de- and there's different versions of Spider-Man from different dimensions. But when they come to a different dimension, they kind of have every now and then their bodies kind of go like 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 fuzzy. And it's because they live in a different frequency than this universe. So when they come into this universe, their frequency is different. So they can't maintain their consistency. Mm-hmm. So then and that's how I kind of was starting to think, um. Oh, that kind of explains the Bigfoot, like why, because everyone's like, why can't you get a clear photo? We got it's like, even with modern tech, we can't get it. It's like, well, maybe if he is from this different frequency, and and scientists talk about this, like uh, if uh, someone from a different dimension, different frequency came here, their body would be fi- phasing at a different mm-hmm. level. And I was like, so it gets you in like, yeah, all these like scientific things, and it's so the joke, mind-boggling. the yes. joke about you know, why, why can't we get a clear picture of Bigfoot because he is blurry. That mm-hmm. that's, that might actually be real for yeah. a second, you know, as he phases yeah. in. Yeah. Like your, your <laughs> camera. Well, it's kind of like when you're trying to take a picture of like a helicopter, mm-hmm. like if you have the frame rate at the exact speed as the blades, it'll look like the helicopter is just floating in midair and the blades are all, and you can see every blade perfect. Mm-hmm. Where if it's off, it's just, it's blurred. 
Yeah. So if your frame rate's not the same rate as Bigfoot, it'll be blurry. But if it's the same, very if it's, interesting theory. If, it, if it's the same frame rate as his frequency, then it'll be a clear shot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we is just that, don't is, know. Are you liking this theory the best? Is this kind of? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, like, I've been drawn drawn to that one because I like because my thing is like, how does he disappear so quickly? Because mm -hmm. he's so big, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he'll be gone. And you're just like, where, where did he go? And I'm like, well, if he's from a different dimension and he just somehow phases in and out of ours mm -hmm. and not that he has control over it necessarily, it's more like he's just going and our, our universes might be so closely intertwined, you know, our earths, whatever sure, sure. are so close that sometimes we see him, sometimes we don't like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I ultimately landed with the. Uh you know, the very physically based, uh, animal of sorts, yeah. um, Gigantopithecus descendant. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I left room there because there are such odd occurrences that I, I personally, I can't deny, like they come from reliable, yeah. responsible sources who have no reason to lie about this. Yeah. Um, and they are describing some just wacky stuff like like you know not it's it's not just a matter of you like looking and then looking away and looking back and oh he's gone you know into the woods or he's like that quick but like literally watching dematerialization yeah um and just i don't know just just all the stuff that that bigfoot has been purported to do that fall outside the realm of what would be considered normal for an animal glowing mm -hmm. eyeballs you know like no no animals have bioluminescent eyeballs um yeah. even glowing fish like those are just like organs inside of them like the whole fish and the eyeballs are not glowing it's just like little pieces of it that are bioluminescent right. so um so those i left room for these really odd experiences because yeah. i do think that there is something to that and I I totally think that there is something to explain that and I brought up this concept of the that I'd learned like the last season about like the trickster entity and mm -hmm. and that's where like <laughs> people think that you know people who are into Sasquatch get weird this is where when you're already in Sasquatch and then you go weirder mm -hmm. but I brought in this idea of the trickster entity who you know, they, it, it doesn't even have, it's been around forever. It's always been there. Doesn't have yeah. a name. It doesn't look like anything. It has no form. It takes on the form that it needs you to see it as in the moment in order mm -hmm. to basically at, at the you know core to trick you, to manipulate yeah. humanity. It's got this vested interest in humanity and it just cannot let go. It cannot leave us alone, whatever this thing is. And you can kind of see this pattern of a trickster element mm -hmm. in all of these subjects. And I, I completely see that in the Bigfoot space yeah. as well. So I, I did leave room there for just kind of the uh, the question mark, you know, the yeah. unexplainables. Is it is it that entity? I don't know. Is it something else? Is Bigfoot just multidimensional? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I like the trickster idea because that would an also. One. Yeah, that would fall into my my ideas of the aliens. Like yes. I, that's where I think, because <clears throat> I I don't think they're good. They yeah. like because I've yet to hear somebody tell me a story where they've been abducted and they're like, yeah, we had a great time. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, they're sticking <laughs> things in me, and I'm like, gotten cut up, and I'm like, that doesn't sound pleasant. That's like, you, why? You gotta why you gotta read some uh, uh Kathleen Martin stuff. She she's got some great stories, some very but, nice stories. Oh, yeah. where they're half nice and they took them took you out to dinner and stuff. Yeah, but the, but there's a there seems to be <laughs> there seems to be a difference though. You can kind of separate the two where there's a there's an experience that's occurring that's very physical in a sense mm -hmm. where they are they are sticking you with stuff and it's not yeah. pleasant and they're you know burning you with acid and all, all kinds of weird stuff yeah and then there's like the spiritual side you know mm -hmm. kind of thing kind of up and up in their ship and the, on a mental level and telepathically communicating and singing kumbaya and it's very yeah. beautiful um, but yeah, she, she does have uh, quite a, a few of those stories and uh, just the things that she's yeah. learned in her experiences that, that she says these entities have taught her and told her. Um, yeah, I think you'd like her stuff.
Okay, I'll have to check her out. Like, yeah, yeah. like I just go with the ones I like. I hear about. I'm like, man, the grays just don't seem like they're nice at all. They they're don't. Like, no, no, they seem like such bullies. Yeah, and they're obsessed with butts, and that's just weird <laughs> to me. And I'm like, what is going on? They're like teenager, teenage boys. <laughs> it's like, what's going on with that? But yeah, it's inappropriate. And it's like, like oh, yeah, oh. take me to dinner first, <laughs> and then you know, whatever. That's wrong too. I should say that. Like, now I'm gonna get visited by aliens, and I and I don't and want that. Yeah. Butt stuff. They're gonna yeah. do butt stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like that. It. I didn't want that. I do hope you get dinner out of it, though. At some yeah. point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's the least they and, can do. And not fast food. Like I want good oh, like dinner. Like a real meal. Yeah. 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 Like Take like you to a, Chili's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's probably as far as they'll go with me. They're like, yeah, chili, so you get baby back ribs. That's it. <laughs> Hurry it up. He was like, gosh, dang it. So, but yeah, but I know I don't want to keep you because I know you got all kinds of stuff, but I want you to go over again where people can see you. And also, do you have any, are you going to any events? Cause I know you go to some, do you have any coming up that you're going to? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, Beer, booze and boogeyman. All of the hosts are going to be convening in Hopkinsville, Kentucky nice. uh, next Saturday. Well, I don't know when this is going to air, but it's going to be taking place on September 28th. Oh, nice. For okay. an overnight live streamed paranormal investigation of the 200 year old night house. It's Ooh. very old, very haunted home. It has just nice. been opened up by a, a buddy of ours, Eric Freeman Sims, um, for paranormal investigation for the first time in its history. Paranormal investigators are, are able to come in and investigate this home. Nice. And there's already been quite a bit of documented activity, uh, evidence captures and the like. So we're really excited about that. that so that is... September so 28th. Are you guys going to be doing a live stream from in there? Yes. Yeah. So we'll Ooh, do, see. we'll do our awesome. regular episode uh, at the beginning of the night. So yeah. everybody can view that. And then we spent uh, like the last week, we, we just wrapped it up here. It was, it was a very long campaign, but we spent like a month and a half Indiegogo campaigning for donations to like help with travel expenses and to actually get yeah. the location for the evening. And we were very successful with it. Thankfully, like people are very excited about this idea because we are going to be live streaming it uh, for donors of the campaign. They're <clears> going to get this little special like RPG access link mm -hmm. where they are going to call the shots for oh, us nice. throughout Say, the Say, go night. to this room and go to that yes, room. Yes, exactly. Ooh, exactly. So, awesome. uh, I, yeah, this is... Um, we, we couldn't really find any other groups that had done something quite like what we're envisioning with like the RPG access and like just live streaming throughout the night. Like you, you get to watch it all if you want. Yeah. Um, so we're really excited to see how this, how this goes. That's <laughs> awesome. A, yeah. If it's a total I, success or not, but yeah, uh, it's going to be I, fun I will, either I will, way. I will definitely be tuning in for the first part of the show. Absolutely. I don't, I don't have the, now, if you don't have the RPG access, can you still watch the live stream of what happens to you or do you have to have the RPG? That is a good question. Um, I think it I'm is being curious. reserved just for folks who like don't like contributed to the campaign, okay. but that's a good question. Actually, something like that we'll, I should bring up to it the will coast, be a Mm -hmm. will be up mm -hmm. later and I it, can it, watch yeah all part, parts of it i'm sure like evidence parts of it will be like posted at a later date um, you'll do like a highlight highlight so, of the night yeah like, yeah like all, all, like all of a sudden <laughs> we see you making pottery in a room and i'm like oh she found her nice ghost Look at that. they're making pottery <laughs> together because okay. that would eating baby back ribs and it, yes, it's yeah. just all worked out yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah see, that's yeah, why like, you don't want me to be there because like I want Kristen to go in the room and make <laughs> pottery and play Unchained Melody. And then and I have see to what do happens. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah. yeah. The pottery is the trigger object. Yeah. 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 And they're like, but why? No one here ever made pottery. What's, what is his, what is he getting at? And then what, what if Patrick Swayze showed up? Oh, I, I'd be all right with that. And then he picks you up like in uh, Dirty Dancing. <laughs> Be Let's just do a whole Patrick Swayze, Swayze. montage, and, montage. He, and he's like, "Don't put Kristen in a corner." So, <laughs> oh right. man, I'm so much more excited about this now. I'm looking forward yeah, to meeting. Patrick. I'm super yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah. Even but though yeah, he has so no connection. 
I did see Patrick Swayze's tooth at Zach Bagan's museum. I I, I, I did go to the museum because I had to. I was in Vegas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He has a tooth. He has his tooth or something. That's weird. It's, it's weird. That's, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, that is the the upcoming event that I'm most excited about. Um, no upcoming conventions, but and you can find Paranorm Girl and yep. Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman on all listening platforms and on our channels on YouTube at Paranorm Girl Pod and of course at Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman. And, and I will have the links on here below. Yay. People can click on them. And go nice. straight to them because yeah because they need to because they are the phenomenal and they yeah. got to go back and listen to your past shows because like i said your your seasons are awesome like you get so much information and like way way more information than i do when i do my shows on these things oh. like i'm like here's what's going on and then i'm like blah blah blah, blah. And like you go <laughs> you get very detailed on like oh, things i'm like you. i'm like i need to spend more time Oh, recently. it's 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 just the OCD. It's okay. Yeah. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But thank you for having me on. This was a oh, lot of yeah. fun. I, hopefully, we can do it again. Yes, like, absolutely. Uh, then, like, uh, I need to have you. Like, uh, maybe I'll have you come back on after your ghostly experience in Kentucky. That would be and, like, awesome. I, I'll wait till you like publish your highlights, and then I'll have you come back and tell me what like and then so people go see more of it yeah Maybe you can, yeah you know that'd be fun to find out and i'll i'll be i'll be further into the the ghost season at that point yeah. as well so i'll have i'll have more stories to share in general yeah. and more facts exactly. about ghosts yeah and don't bring any children ghost home with you you don't need Ooh. that Ooh. yeah like if you, if you meet one there in kentucky it's like can i be mm. will you be my mommy now Say no. Snay on the Ami um, May. Yeah, say I have dogs, and you know, right? You have dogs, right? Right. I do. Uh, I got, yeah, I got two yeah. dogs. Two yeah, cats. I thought I heard them at one point. So see, like I have dogs, I have cats. I can't afford an invisible child. I, I, I really can't. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. rough. I don't have time here. for that. Don't have time for that. Because then <laughs> they turn into invisible teenagers, and they're moody. It's awful. It's awful. No ghost children are coming home with me. But if I do find uh, one that's you know apt with the you know editing programs and yeah, and or is doing a helpful dishes. ghost, yeah, bring that. Or doing home. dishes, I'm bringing yeah. that home. Yeah, or the good looking one that wants to make pottery. Those are the two you go for. None of the others. I don't want to hear about any others with you. Like if you're like, <laughs> like, hey Gregory, look, I brought home this ghost. He does nothing but knock stuff over. I was like, you already have cats. They do that. I'm just, so. I, I envision the scene where Lee walks into the room and I'm just like sitting there by myself, like making pottery to yeah. unchain Melody. It's yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be good. <laughs> I'll be able to explain it. <laughs> like, like what's going on there? So, but yeah, but I thank you. Thank you for coming on. It was fun. And definitely I want you to come back after your ghostly experience here. Cause that sounds amazing. And like, I want to hear all about it because I, I'm, uh, yeah, I obviously I'll watch the highlights and everything else, but to hear your personal perspective is going to be way cool. So absolutely. I would be happy to do so. Awesome. And those of you watching us, thank you. Please go check out her podcast and her Instagrams and everything. And I'll have all those links. Go check them out. Follow her, like her, everything and tell Everybody, even your mom and dad about her, even if they don't like this kind of stuff, tell them anyway. You know, maybe they'll learn to like it because they should. And remember, to, as always, stay safe. Keep searching. The Fedora. Check out FedoraCRT.com today. <laughs>